Lieutenant Kane watched from the observation deck, a knot tightening in his gut. Below, the soldier lay strapped to the table. Once a proud member of the Terran Defense Corps, now he was little more than a husk. Dr. Ash, the architect, hovered over his creation. His lab coat was stained a rusty brown. The procedure is brutal, yes, Ash had explained earlier, his voice clinical, almost gleeful. But in this war for survival, brutality yields results. Kane's knuckles whitened on the railing. The Terran Commonwealth teetered on the brink of annihilation. Their enemy, the insectoid Zilari, had swarmed across entire star systems, their insatiable hunger leaving barren worlds in their wake. Desperate times. Yet this felt less like hope, and more like an abomination. Gene splicings harvested from captured specimens, Ash continued, tracing a scalpel along the soldier's emaciated chest. Enhanced regenerative properties, heightened aggression. In essence, Lieutenant, we create a soldier who cannot die and will not stop killing. Below, the soldier twitched. Not the spark of returning consciousness, but the involuntary spasms of raw manipulation. An animal twitching on a wire. Project Lazarus, Ash had called it, a perverse twist of the biblical tale. But no resurrection awaited these men, only a fate arguably worse than death. Subject is ready for phase two, a technician announced, his voice tinny through the speakers. Ash nodded. Neural resequencing. Let us unleash the monster within. The lights above the operating table blinked. The soldier's body arched in agony. Everything about this was wrong. But the war raged and soon the enemy would be at Earth's doorstep. What choice did they have? The screams faded into ragged gasps, then choked, gurgling silence. Dr. Ash leaned over the soldier, his face a mask of fascination. Stabilization complete, the technician declared, his voice devoid of any inflection, save for a hint of unease. Not even he could mask the horror simmering beneath the clinical facade. Survival rate? Kane's voice emerged. Ash straightened, turning a calculating eye towards the observation deck. Thirty percent statistically. He shrugged, thin lips twitching into a semblance of a smile. A grim figure, yes, but with each iteration the protocol improves. War is a crucible, Lieutenant. It demands sacrifice. The sacrifice lay beneath them, a twisted form barely recognizable as human. His skin, once tanned and battle-hardened, was now a sickly, translucent grey, stretched taut over bulging veins and unnatural muscle formation. But it was the eyes that haunted Cain. Once mirroring the determination of a seasoned soldier, those eyes now held only a chilling, feral emptiness. Subject X-12, Ash stated, scribbling notes on his datapad. Physiological enhancements as predicted. Psychological profile. He paused, tilting his head as if listening for a whisper only he could hear. Uncertain. Kane bristled. You mean unstable. Potential volatility is a given. Ash countered his gaze returning to the operating table. But that aggression, Lieutenant, it's magnificent. A raw fury to be unleashed on our enemy. We'll mold them, weaponize them, and the Zilari will tremble. Could these barely alive creations turn the tide? Was victory worth this? This blasphemy? Before he could confront the moral abyss opening beneath him, Ash pressed a button on the intercom. X-12 to containment, commence batch two. Just like that, another soldier, another life fed to the machine. Kane clenched his fists. He should have protested, should have refused to be complicit in this. But could he have lived with himself if Earth fell because he prioritized his conscience over the survival of humanity? Lieutenant, Ash's voice held a subtle note of challenge. You're needed topside. High command is eager for a status report. He was trapped. As surely as those broken soldiers in their containment cells, Kane turned from the window, one last glance at the inert form of X-12. A ghost, forged in blood and despair. And they were only the beginning. Lieutenant Kane walked the corridor. He couldn't shake the image of X-12, the hollowness of those vacant eyes. A shudder rippled through him. Was it disgust or fear? 
The council chamber loomed ahead, a bastion of polished wood and gleaming screens, a stark contrast to the clinical horror of the laboratory. General Brock sat at the head of the table. The other officers, hardened men tempered by countless campaigns, watched Kane with thinly veiled judgment. Lieutenant, Brock acknowledged with a curt nod. Dr. Ash speaks of miracles. Give it to us plainly. The procedure is successful. Subjects show enhanced strength, resilience. He hesitated, the word monstrosity hovering on his lips. Aggressive tendencies are pronounced. Satisfaction crossed Brock's face. Good, Earth cannot afford mercy. We need weapons, Lieutenant. Are they ready for deployment? Deployment? The question burst from Kane before he could temper it. Sir, these men are barely sentient. Soldiers follow orders, Lieutenant, not ethics. A gruff voice barked from the end of the table. Colonel Briggs, infamous for his scorched earth tactics. These aren't soldiers anymore, Kane retorted, his voice laced with a desperation that surprised even himself. They're barely controlled animals. Brock leaned forward, his eyes hard. In these desperate hours, Lieutenant, controlled animals are precisely what we need. The Zilari won't negotiate, won't pity us. They leave nothing but devoured worlds in their wake. We'll counter savagery with savagery. A chill settled deep in Kane's bones. He'd witnessed the devastation firsthand. Entire colonies reduced to smoking craters. Yet the thought of unleashing Ash's creations, his war-forged nightmares, was a fresh kind of horror altogether. There must be another way, he said, though even to his own ears the plea sounded feeble. Brock slammed a fist on the table, the sound jarring against the room's controlled atmosphere. There is no other way! We use whatever weapons we have or we die. It's that simple, Lieutenant. Kane knew it was true. He'd lost too many brothers in arms, seen too many worlds burn. Yet to embrace this, this perversion of duty, of survival, it felt like they'd lost the war for their souls even before the final battle began. General Brock's fist unclenched, but the tension in the council chamber remained taut as a wire. One last chance, Lieutenant. His voice held the finality of a death sentence. Are you a soldier or a coward who'll second-guess his orders in the heat of battle? The accusation stung Kane, a blatant appeal to his pride, the one thing keeping his conscience from overriding his ingrained sense of duty. He clenched his jaw. I'll lead the detachment myself, sir, he ground out. Ensure these assets are used in accordance with our values. It was a feeble promise, one he doubted he could keep. Approval replaced Brock's scowl. Very well. You have your orders, Lieutenant. Dismissed. The transport shuttle thrummed with growls and barely restrained violence. Six of the soldiers, or assets as command now insisted, were strapped into reinforced restraints, their forms twitching in the dim light. Kane had requested sedation. Brock had denied it, citing the need for the subjects to be primed for combat. The stench of recycled air mingled with the musk of barely suppressed aggression was suffocating. Kane forced himself to meet the flat, feral stares of his charges. X-14, X-17, X-20 reduced to numbers stripped of humanity. Yet a disturbing glimmer of recognition lay in their depths, a reminder of the men they once were. The shuttle shuddered as it landed the jarring impact kicking the creatures into a frenzy of roars and straining against their bonds. Trank darts, Kane barked to the medics. He couldn't risk a breach inside a friendly outpost. Planet Zaldor. It had been a thriving mining colony until the Zilari descended. Intel reported a hive establishing in the ravaged ruins. It was the Lazarus unit's proving ground. Hatch open! The pilot's voice crackled over the speakers. Blazing sunlight and a wave of dust swept in. Kane steeled himself, signalling the deployment of the squad. The image of X-12 on the operating table flashed through his mind. The creatures hit the ground in assault. They moved less like soldiers, more like predators uncaged. Then, 
X-17 let out a blood-curdling howl and charged straight into the swirling dust where hidden shapes shifted and insectoid screeches began to erupt. The unit was unstoppable. Zilari Kaitin shattered. Bodies were torn with a brutality that would have made veteran troopers bulk. Silence descended in the wake of carnage. Zilari corpses littered the scorched ground, their iridescent carapaces glistening in the harsh sunlight. All around the soldiers stood panting, unsettlingly still. Patches of their own greyish skin were torn, revealing muscle and glistening bone beneath. Yet their wounds were already beginning to knit. Retrieval team, secure the casualties. Kane's voice sounded flat, almost foreign to his own ears. It was no longer soldiers he commanded. The medics moved among the creatures, less like healers, more like wranglers handling dangerous beasts. With each dart administered, he saw the feral light fade from their eyes, replaced by an emptiness that cut deeper than any physical wound. They had fought like demons, yet now slumped back into an unsettling docility. Cain walked the battlefield. Here a Zilari limb twitched feebly. There a soldier lay slumped against a rock, the grey of their skin taking on the pallor of death. One had lost half its face, the exposed tissue an obscene mockery of humanity. He knelt beside it, and for a moment their eyes met. A silent plea flashed there, a spark of the man that once was. Sergeant Dixon. Kane whispered the name he'd dug from the soldier's personnel file. It felt like a desperate attempt to cling to something, anything that resembled the world he used to know. Dixon blinked slowly then shuddered, his body going limp. Kane stood swaying slightly as vertigo crashed over him. Had he done the right thing? Were these lives, these broken souls, worth the cost of victory? Doubt clawed at him, a relentless counterpoint to the adrenaline fading from his veins. A shadow eclipsed the sun. General Brock stood above him, flanked by two heavily armed guards. Even here, surrounded by the aftermath of slaughter, the general radiated an air of unshakable authority. The Lazarus Project is a resounding success, Lieutenant, Brock announced, his voice booming across the battlefield. Earth has its teeth again. Kane opened his mouth to protest, to demand some semblance of compassion for these things they had created. But the words caught in his throat, replaced by a bitter, bile-like taste. Brock, Mistaking his silence for approval, clasped Kane's shoulder. The sooner we break these creatures, the sooner we win this damn war. The Genesis Chamber had always been a place of shadows and sterile lights. Gurneys rolled in, bearing broken bodies, casualties from the front lines, men deemed lost causes until Ash's twisted science offered a gruesome second chance. Each sacrifice was a step toward victory, a step away from the abyss of extinction. News of the Lazarus Project's success spread through Earth's forces and across the ravaged colonies. Panic turned to hope, then to a demand. More soldiers, stronger ones, faster ones, and so the machinery of war churned. Strategy councils dominated by battle-hardened commanders and pragmatic politicians now had a new weapon to wield. The moral debates felt distant, drowned out by the Zilari's relentless advance. Cain became the program's enabler, sourcing the raw materials, the near dead, the hopelessly wounded. Zilari worlds burned. One by one, their hives fell to the Lazarus units, clawing their way through tides of insectoid warriors. Each battle, each transmission from the front, cemented Cain's reluctant transformation. He was no longer a soldier haunted by shadows, but a cog in the machine. A knock jolted him from reviewing troop requisitions. It was Colonel Briggs, a cruel twist to his lips. We have a problem, Lieutenant, a potential complication. Briggs led him not to the lab, but to the containment cells. The sounds emanating from within sent a chill down his spine. Not the howls of battle, but a keening like that of a trapped animal. Cell X-23. Inside, the soldier had shredded his restraints, exposed bone and unnatural muscle twitching through torn flesh. But it was his eyes that sent a wave of unease. 
Not the usual vacancy, but a manic gleam of something akin to intelligence. He's remembering, Briggs hissed. Bits and pieces, but enough to destabilize the unit. Recommending termination. Kane studied the twisted form. Termination. A sanitized word for the execution of a man already broken beyond repair. Ash? he asked. Could he fix this? Repress whatever memory was threatening the project's carefully constructed brutality? Briggs snorted. Ash is brilliant, but even he can't undo what's done. The creature's compromised. This spreads. The whole damn project collapses. And with its collapse, perhaps, Earth itself. Kane made his decision. Issue the order, Colonel. The project was no longer an experiment. It was a lifeline. Production ramped up. Labs sprouted in hidden bunkers, churning out not soldiers but living weapons. The public rallied around the soldiers clinging to tales of their savagery. No longer whispered horrors, they were lauded as a necessity, perverse saviors. Kane found himself at the center of this transformation. Meetings with military brass were interspersed with requisition orders. Battalions of Lazarus units, customized with bladed exoskeletons, regenerative serums that turned them into unkillable horrors. It was war distilled to its purest, most brutal form. Yet a shadow hung over the strategy sessions. Whispers of the rememberers, subjects with unstable flashes of their past. Kane ensured swift containment, termination when necessary. They were a glaring reminder that within those shells were fragments of men. Sacrifices Earth demanded, and he provided. Admiral Solus, a veteran of countless campaigns, approached Kane after one particularly tense meeting. Your creatures are impressive, Lieutenant, I can't deny it. He paused, his gaze sharp. But victory needs more than ferocity. Where's the finesse? The tactics? Kane stiffened his own doubts reflecting in the Admiral's words. The soldiers were blunt instruments, effective at wiping out Zilari hives, but they lacked adaptability. Working on it, sir, he responded. He returned to Ash. Can they learn? He pressed. Can we imprint basic commands, strategies? Ash's eyes gleamed. The mind is malleable, but risky. Too much memory, too much cognition, and they become unpredictable. Kane pictured X-23, the fear in his eyes more human than monstrous. Yet Earth couldn't afford unpredictable weapons. Do it, he ordered, the weight of the decision settling like a shroud upon him. A controlled wild animal can still be leashed. As the war dragged on, Earth reclaimed lost territory. News feeds were filled with brutal victories bought in blood. Amidst the cheers were the first mutterings of dissent. Condemnations from backwater colonies, those who saw in the soldiers, not saviors, but reflections of humanity's own descent into barbarity. Cain silenced the criticism, both external and within himself. Each victory, each liberated world, steeled his nerve. He, on the bloodied front lines, understood the terrible, twisted truth. There were worse fates than becoming a monster if it meant saving mankind. The Zilari hives were in disarray. For millennia, they'd relied on overwhelming numbers and relentless aggression, yet now they faced something different. On a scorched world on the outer rim, a Zilari overlord screeched in a language of rage and confusion. It wasn't just the brutality. The corpses left behind were desecrated, consumed by what now fought beside their human enemies. Their warriors faced a cannibalistic horror that mirrored their own tactics, a perversion that cut to the core of the hive mind. Panic started to spread, unsettling the insect swarms. Fear was a new sensation for the Zilari, and one they struggled to process. For the first time in centuries, their relentless conquest was halted, and whispers of an unthinkable word began to infect the network. Retreat. On Earth, however, celebration quickly soured. While victories mounted, the unease gnawed at the edges of the Alliance. Factions emerged, some condemning the brutality of the project, others fearing its uncontrolled power. 
Whispers of rebellion spread in backwater colonies, spurred on by garbled reports of escaped units now roaming without orders. Kane found himself battling on two fronts, against the relentless Zilari and against the fracturing unity of his own species. Strategy sessions became riddled with political maneuvering. Generals, once eager to deploy the units, now eyed them with thinly veiled distrust. They are weapons, nothing more, Kane argued heatedly before the Alliance Council. Tools to save billions of lives. And when the Zilari are defeated, what then, Lieutenant? A senator asked, his voice calm. Do you recall your creations? Do they fade back into obedient citizens? Kane had no answer for that. Only the suspicion that the monsters didn't fade. They multiplied. Even within his own ranks, he began to see glimpses of defiance in the vacant eyes of his troops. He'd leashed the beasts, but with each battle, with each dose of Ash's mind-altering serums, the leashes began to fray. He was caught in a tightening knot. The Alliance needed victories that only his army could provide. Yet each victory carried the seeds of a future where the enemy might not be insectoid swarms, but the very creatures they had unleashed to fight them. The Alliance Council shattered. Backwater colonies issued declarations of secession, citing the project as the true enemy. Renegade fleets skirmished on the borders, further siphoning resources from the already strained front lines against the Zelari. Within the military, factions formed. Some shared the secessionist fears, while others saw a chance for control, control of Earth, of the galaxy. General Brock, once Kane's unwavering advocate, now eyed him with a calculating gleam. Kane was the architect of this army, and whether as a weapon or a threat, his value was immense. The leash was slipping from his grasp. He doubled down on Ash's mind suppression protocols. The soldiers became twitching puppets, their roars replaced by gruesome obedience, their effectiveness on the battlefield undeniable yet deeply unsettling. The victories continued, but each one seemed to carry a hint of a dark future. Then the reports came in, not from battlefields, but from deep recon units. The Zilari, in a display of adaptation, were changing. Hive structures morphed, becoming denser, more defensive. Their warriors grew bulkier, chitinous carapaces thickening in a crude but unsettling mimicry of the Lazarus soldiers' unnatural resilience. Admiral Solus cornered Kane in a deserted corridor, his face taut with disgust and satisfaction. You made them evolve, Lieutenant. You made our enemy stronger. Kane had only cold calculations to offer in defense. It was always an arms race, Admiral. The question now is, can we adapt faster than they can? The ground under their feet was shifting, and the war was rapidly becoming one not merely for survival, but for the warped, blackened soul of humanity itself. Chaos descended. Earth's forces were stretched impossibly thin, battling both a resurgent Zilari horde and their own fracturing alliance. Renegade ships clashed with loyalist forces, skirmishes that grew into full-blown battles in the icy void. Once a single front, the war devolved into a fragmented nightmare. Kane found himself a pawn in this new game. He was shuttled between crumbling outposts, his units deployed to shore up faltering fronts, both against the Zilari and disloyal human factions. Each deployment brought more empty victories, each battlefield littered with the forms of his creations. Whispers reached him of General Brock's machinations. The general had seized control of a substantial force and cut communications with high command. A coup, or perhaps an attempt to carve out his own fiefdom in the crumbling empire. The loyalists, divided and demoralized, could do little to stop him. Then came the transmission Kane had been both anticipating and dreading. It wasn't Ash, but Admiral Solus, his craggy face lit by the frantic glow of a command console. We've found it, Lieutenant. A Zilari overhive. The heart of this damned infestation. Solus's voice was strained. Massive, heavily fortified. One strike could cripple their command network, turn the tide. But the risk was colossal. Sending the bulk of the soldiers was suicide. A force easily turned against them if the strike failed. 
Yet, hesitation meant earth being bled dry, consumed by both external and internal forces. Cain, staring down at his hands, hands stained with too much blood and bioengineered toxins, made his decision. Ash's mind control serums were still unstable. One shock, one surge of memory could turn his troops against him. Better to unleash them and die fighting than become a puppet in Brock's game or a slave to his own creations. I'll lead the strike force, he said, the words feeling like a death sentence not just for himself, but perhaps for everything his species once stood for. The overhive was a symbol to the Zilari's adaptation. Spiked towers rose from a landscape littered with corpses, their own mutated kin included. Cain deployed his troops not as soldiers, but as a force of nature, a mindless, relentless tide. The battle was a maelstrom of chitin, unnatural flesh and primal fury. The Lazarus soldiers tore through the swarms with scary efficiency, their own resilience pushing through wounds that would have felled normal warriors. But for each insectoid abomination that fell, more emerged, their defences adapting to his creations. Then the signal came. Solus's battered flagship plunged into the heart of the hive, its reactors overloading in a final blaze of defiance. The resulting blast was blinding. When the dust settled, the overhive was a smoking ruin. Cain, slumped against a mound of Zilari corpses, could barely comprehend the devastation. The Zilari, for a fleeting moment, were disoriented. But disorientation only bought time, never victory. It was then that the final twist of the knife came. A signal came through his command link, overriding Ash's control protocols. It wasn't Brock, but another voice, filled with cold amusement. One of the secessionist leaders. The leash is off, Lieutenant. The voice crackled over the speakers. Your monsters have new masters. Kane stared at the transmission. Shock gave way to icy fury. The secessionists, the traitors who had abandoned their own kind, now controlled his creations. His army stirred, their blank eyes seeming to burn into him with a predatory gleam. No longer his tools, they were now his executioners. Or worse, pawns in a conflict beyond his control. The Zilari, sensing weakness in their enemy, surged forward with newfound ferocity. Earth's forces, fragmented and demoralized, offered little resistance. In the maelstrom of battle, Cain saw Brock's forces arrive, not to aid but to scavenge whatever scraps they could from the wreckage of a dying empire. The battle was lost before it could truly begin. Yet, as claws ripped into his flesh, as his vision faded to a blood-red haze, Cain experienced a twisted kind of clarity. This was his legacy, a world consumed by conflict, devoured by ambitions on every side. There was no salvation, only survival at any cost. And as the light faded, he understood a terrible truth. He too had been changed by the things he had unleashed. No longer was he merely the architect of monsters. He had become one. Duty, ideals, these were nothing but relics of a world already consumed. Now there was only cold calculation, and adaptability. The line between man and monster had blurred beyond recognition. He awoke to pain. It was different this time. Sharp, focused pain, not the dull ache of battlefield wounds. He opened his eyes, blinking in the dim light. A figure leaned over him, a silhouette against the grimy lighting. But as his vision cleared, the shock cut through the pain. Ash. The architect of monstrosities hovered above him with a familiar look. A clinical curiosity. Subject X1, Ash declared, his voice thick with a cruel satisfaction. The Lazarus Protocol is entering its final phase. He wasn't in a medical facility, but a makeshift lab one not under Loyalist or Brock's command. The secessionists, it seemed, recognized the true source of power in this war-torn galaxy. Kane struggled against the restraints on the operating table, but his mutilated body offered little resistance. Part of him screamed in outrage at the injustice of it all. But a colder, darker part of him simply observed, calculating. The galaxy was a dark place now, and only the most cunning, 
the most adaptable would survive. Ash raised a syringe, a viscous liquid gleaming within. Control was imperfect. Now, he hissed. We strive for something greater. Obedience is useless, Lieutenant. But loyalty? Loyalty can be sculpted. Rage flared, a final spark of the humanity he once knew, but it was swiftly suppressed by a wave of numbing exhaustion. As the needle pierced his skin and the darkness closed in again, Cain acknowledged the inevitable truth. The war wasn't ending. It was evolving. And as long as a single twisted mind, human or otherwise, craved power, the dark game would continue with or without him. 